it's time for some intermittent fasting Q&A. But we're not stopping there. We're going all the way down the line from the videos that were posted on my channel the week of October 29th. So what I have here is I have a bunch of questions that all came from my channel for all the videos that were posted last week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and down the list, I'm gonna answer some of the most common questions. Also some of the questions that I think are gonna be the most interesting for people and that a lot of you might be wondering but maybe weren't so forthright when it came down to asking in the comment section. So first off, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We got new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And like you're seeing in this video right here, one of the only channels that actually takes the time to answer your questions once a week as well. So let's get right to it. So the first video is how to do intermittent fasting, the complete guide. Okay, this video absolutely wrecked shop. I cannot believe how many views it already has. It clearly, clearly had the information that people wanted. So some great questions. So the first one I wanna answer. The Wanda's Incredible channel says, how long should someone dry fast for? I have been doing short dry fast, six hours, three days a week, but I'm rewatching your fasting video and you're saying should regularly fast 16 hours. All right, uh, essentially I wanna answer this quickly. Dry fasting is extreme and you should really be pushing it a little bit further than six hours, but doing it infrequently. So let the extremeness, for lack of a better term, of the dry fast really do the work. So like maybe every three months or so, do a good maybe 24 hour dry fast and you'll be in good shape. All right, so Cheyenne Givichian, I think I'm saying that right, says, I usually start my fast around 4 p.m., usually drinking a protein shake and then work out late at night and break my fast in the morning. Is that going to lead to muscle loss because I don't eat before or after my workout? First and foremost, no, it's definitely not. In fact, training in the middle of your fasting period is quite good. Yeah, that way you're putting yourself in a great, great opportunity to burn some fat. So don't even worry about that at all. You're gonna be a far enough position into your fast that you're gonna have those ketone bodies that are actually protecting your muscle to begin with. She has that beta hydroxybutyrate, those ketone bodies that are produced when you're fasting, those actually promote protein synthesis and actually stop the breakdown of protein. So you're good. All right, then Agent K says, how does sweetener trigger an insulin spike? Basically it has zero calories. Calories trigger insulin response, not the taste of sweeteners. Well, Agent, it's actually pretty interesting. So it's not necessarily the calories that trigger insulin response always. Research is starting to show that the excitotoxins that are triggered because of sweeteners, so for example, the glutamate response you get in the brain, might actually communicate with pancreatic beta cells. So it's still a little bit ambiguous and it's tough to tell. Honestly, it's not worth the risk. In my opinion, why add those to the mix if you absolutely don't need them? All right, the next question comes from Zach is cool. It says, I've started intermittent fasting for the last three months. It brought great results and I lost 23 pounds of weight, but then my stomach is often in pain during the fasting period and the problem gets even worse when I consume apple cider vinegar during the fasting period. Any advice on how to protect my gut during the fasting window? All right, so Zach, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna start incorporating collagen protein when you don't fast. So when you're not fasting, start adding collagen into the mix. Now I recommend getting some kind of collagen that works well, some true collagen peptide, like uh, maybe the Great Lakes collagen or something that you can find at a, a grocery store that's almost like the gelatin type collagen, not just the usual collagen protein that you might get from like a keto store. Even though I'm a fan of those, you want to get for something that's going to be a higher gelatin content to help really rebuild that gut. Uh, go for that and start using that when you break your fast and over time it should start to support it a little bit more. Actually, right, so the next one comes from Marcus Zapita. He says, quick question on breaking a fast. You say not to mix fat with carbs. Does that mean if I wanna break my fast with fats and protein, I can't have a single carb? All right, so you can still have a carb, but it needs to be a carb that's coming from like veggies and things like that. So you don't wanna be mixing fats and carbs if you're gonna be having a good insulin spike. If you're having some broccoli, you're gonna have such a small insulin spike, it's not a big deal. You just don't wanna be combining like an actual carb carb, okay? So things like broccoli, things like the veggies, you're all good there. I just don't want you going and having starch and then having fats along with it. Uh, Henry Ray says, do you take anything after your morning workout, like a protein shake, or do you just wait until you break, my, uh, break your fast? Henry, I completely wait until I break my fast. So I pride myself on finishing my workout and then just having some water and maybe some caffeine. That's literally it. Like I might go and have some iced tea or something like that. That's it. For me, that's all I need. I like the effect of being able to continue to burn fat throughout the rest of the day. Don't worry, you're not gonna burn muscle. All right, Alex says, what about electrolytes? Are they important to take while fasting? Yes, they are. Depending on where you live and what kind of climate you're in, how much you're sweating, how much you're working out, all that stuff, your stress level, it is very important. Magnesium and potassium are very, very important and sodium is very important. So if you add those three into the mix, you're in really good shape. I also recommend just sipping on some electrolytes throughout the day. Uh, Carlos says, in order to maximize fat loss and autophagy during my intermittent dry fasting, what would be better to drink just once after I wake up? Water with lemon and ACV, black coffee, or a combination of both? Combination of both. ACV is my jam and coffee is also my jam. Don't mix them into one drink though, that's kind of gross. 
Uh, Think Vesting says, hi, if keto allows for low carb, up to 30 grams a day, and I'm on one meal a day, uh, it says I can't mix fat with carbs. So when can I take coffee with sugar? I want to restrict my eating window so as to maximize fasting benefits. Any help appreciated. Honestly, uh, in your case, your is gonna be so insulin sensitive, you wouldn't really wanna mix fat with carbs until you at least have, I don't know, probably at the end of your meal. I mean, the, quite frankly though, you should probably avoid it. That's one of the rules of OMAD that I would say is you don't really wanna be mixing fats with carbs. That's in my opinion what makes OMAD so hard is because you're trying to consolidate it all to one meal, which means that you have to break some of these cardinal rules. So it's a hard one to answer, to be quite, uh, quite honest with you. Um, okay, then Angela Bush says, you said don't mix carbs with fat. Is that just for the first meal? Can you add stevia to your coffee? If you don't drink bone broth, what's another good substitute? Okay, so when you break your fast, you should not be mixing fats with carbs. But a couple hours later, it's not as big of a deal, okay? You're just very insulin sensitive when you first break your fast. Stevia is okay to add to your coffee. And your last question, uh, if you don't do bone broth, honestly, you can just omit it, but you can also have like a little bit of collagen protein. That can do the trick too. Uh, Catherine says, can you still build muscle and recover if you don't eat after your workout? Absolutely, you definitely can. In fact, protein synthesis stays elevated for 24 hours, so you're totally good there. Uh, Chop Breaker says, so when you say not to combine fats and carbs, does that include oils on salads or other vegetables? Yes, it does, but hopefully you're not putting carbs and starches on your salad. So if you're talking about, again, the broccoli, maybe some zucchini, a little bit of things on your salad, you're okay there with some oil. Uh, CQ says, will taking casein at the end of the eight hour eating period delay the fasting period? Good, good question. Uh, I wouldn't say it delays it, but it's definitely gonna make it so that you're digesting that food a little bit longer. So it could make it so you take a little bit longer to get into that fasting period. But technically, the fast begins when you stop eating. I will say though, get rid of the casein protein. It's carcinogenic, it's not good for you, and it's definitely not doing your gut any good. Uh, okay, the next video. Popular food myths, Thanksgiving dinner debunked. Uh, Keto Trucker says, hey Thomas, I normally brine my turkey with brown sugar water and salt. Is there an alternative to using brown sugar? Uh, actually, the Lakanto uh, stuff that I talk about, the Lakanto monk fruit erythritol mix, that's a way to go. That's definitely gonna be a really solid one. They have a golden version too, so it's almost like using brown sugar. Uh, Sacha Kachin, that's a hard name to say, sorry. Since lean protein such as turkey meat highly increases insulin, should the advice only be drop the carbs, increase the fat to avoid a peak of insulin to avoid dizziness? Um, not necessarily. I mean, you should just drop the carbs, but it's Thanksgiving. I mean, you're gonna have some carbs, realistically, unless you're like diehard keto and you're not gonna do the carbs at all. So just go for the lower glycemic carbs if you can. It's really just an explanation as to why the sleepiness occurs, not necessarily how to avoid it. So the Bulgarian wolf says, does orexin get suppressed when you frequently overeat or is there a different reason? So in that video, I talk about orexin and how it has a role in terms of fat loss and how it has a role in terms of gastric emptying and all that. Yes, in short, if you overeat a lot, orexin does get suppressed because it is released when you are eating a large amount. So if you overeat a lot, you're not gonna have as much of a result with it and not gonna get the benefit that occurs sometimes. All right, then we have the next video was, this was another really big one, how long should you wait between meals? This one was very popular. Um, Monkey D. Gizus <laughs> says, if calories in and calories out matter, and this closed technical system formula explains our biological bodies, why even care about insulin to lose fat? Why detox like you're telling? No, calories in and calories out matter, but it matters at a different scale from what we might always look at. I say we always look at calories in, calories out over the course of 24 hours, but we shouldn't be doing that. 24 hours is man-made. We should be looking at it over the course of different times. Okay, so in this hour, my calories in, calories out might be different from another hour. My hormones might be causing my resting metabolic rate to be more elevated at this very point in time than three hours from now. So that's kind of my point there. Anthony Sadiq says, what about while on keto? Does the same rules apply about spacing your meals out four to six hours apart? Yes, in fact, on keto, they apply even more so because then it really allows your body to tap into the fat burning. So Omar says, so I don't have to eat a pre-workout meal, right? That's correct, Omar. In fact, I recommend not eating a pre-workout meal whenever possible. Uh, Kalina says, just wondering, will chewing gum between meals trigger insulin production? Uh, generally not, especially since most sugar-free gums are made with aspartame, which doesn't really have too much of an effect on insulin, aside from what the excitotoxin effect might be in the brain. All right, here's a killer video. This video is absolutely dominated, so I've got a few questions from this one. This was fasting what you can and cannot drink. All right, so Ola Blish says, what about yerba mate? It has one gram of fiber. You know, yerba mate, for some reason, on the nutrition facts, says it has fiber, but it's no different than any other tea. So in my opinion, you're still good to go. Joey says, I've heard that sucralose can cause an insulin response due to how sweet it tastes, and it tricks the body into thinking that carbs are being consumed. Is that really the case? Uh, 
so again, I answered this earlier, but it's kind of ambiguous. It's, it's hard to really tell. Research is still trying to determine if the excitotoxin effect in the brain from the glutamate cycle does actually communicate with beta cells in your pancreas. So can't really answer that definitively, but in short, I would lean towards yes. Uh, Just Syker says, how about a splash of milk and coffee? Will that break a fast? Yes, it will. Please do not. Eric says, what I'm curious about is while coffee, ACV, lime, lemon, and tea stimulate autophagy, what do the calories do in terms of HGH and insulin? So that's a good question. So insulin is a tough one to talk about because calories have a different effect on insulin depending on what kind of calorie they are, to be completely honest. Uh, as far as human growth hormone, it's usually calorie restriction that has a big effect on human growth hormone, not necessarily fasting. So you should still be good even with those small amounts of calories coming in. Uh, the kid says, what about vitamins? Do those break a fast? If they're water soluble, they will not break a fast. If they're fat soluble, like a soft gel, that will break a fast. Eddie says, uh, when to start counting the hours of fasting? We are not fasting immediately after finishing eating, three hours after, five hours after. For all intents and purposes, you're fasting once you take your last bite of your last meal, okay? That's when your fasting period starts. Jamie Mauser says, can you please define what you mean by break your fast? Because I feel like it's very ambiguous. Does it mean autophagy stops and never starts again? Or does not safe mean that it's dangerous somehow? Jamie, it definitely doesn't mean that it's dangerous. Okay, I definitely want to put that out there. It just means that it does reset autophagy a little bit because you're having this process occurring in your body and the second that it actually gets some nutrients in there, it's gonna slow down that. So yes, yeah, autophagy starts and stops to some degree. So that's what we're really trying to prevent. We're also talking about pancreatic lipase. We're talking about other enzymes that promote the actual breakdown of fats within the liver. Um, Mariano says, does matcha count? You say it's fine because we're not ingesting the leaves. However, the matcha available to me is the powder that you put inside the water. Yeah, matcha is finely, finely ground up leaves, but the amount that you end up ingesting from matcha ends up being about the same that you'd get from leaves. So honestly, in my opinion, the benefits with the uh, cholecystokinin increases and everything with matcha far outweigh any one or two calories that come in from the leaves. So I would say, yes, you're a green light on matcha. Um, Alia of the Nive, last question says, are LaCroix drinks acceptable during fasting periods? Yes, LaCroix and carbonated water and mineral water is totally good to go. It's not gonna break your fast. Just make sure there's no sweetener or no sugar in there. It sometimes is sneaked in there. You just gotta look at the label. Guys, as always, make sure you're keeping it tuned in with all my videos and post your comments in the videos because this is where we pull all these questions from. So if you ever have a burning question, just hit it in the comment section. Hopefully we'll address it in the follow-up video. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.